off against each other. You know, a tournament of 606 players on a team of five people, this is uh, unlikely to happen. Yes. Uh, Jessup looks to be on the same 75 that Kevin Jones played, Prismatic Omen, Scape Shift. It's the exact same 75. For Jim Davis, he's on Eldrazi Taxes. This is an interesting one. It is a variation on Hate Bears that plays Eldrazi cards. So the Eldrazi aren't bears. That's why we have to put Eldrazi in the deck name. There's three threes and four fours, as we see a Thought Not Seer on the battlefield here. We did get a chance to get Jim in the sideboard to talk about this one. So recapping, Jim is up a game. Jessup had with the obstinate Bailoth in play. See, Jim's going to try for a second Thought Not Seer, but that'll get remanded as we go back to Jessup. Jessup paying three mana as there is a Thalia in play for Davis. Scape Shift is an interesting act for both against Death and Taxes. The card laying an Arbiter is hugely problematic. Yeah, you have to have your Sweeper or your Lightning Bolt to get that off the table. And we see here Jessup Scape Shifting through the board anyway. He's, I think this is a win here for him. He's going to go, he had to pay two to shuffle, pay a. Th it costs seven mana to Scape Shift on this board. But fortunately, Jessup has it. Yeah, with the Arbiter plus the Thalia, you make it seven. It's just like the interaction between Scapeshift and Mana Leak. It takes more than one. You have to be able to make Scapeshift cost eight in, in order to actually slow them down on that one. So players, we will get to see all of game three as Jessup evens it up at one game apiece. Now, traditionally, what I like about this Eldrazi Taxes deck is uh, the, the Hate Bear style strategy can be weak to a card like Anger of the Gods. That's a card that you often see out of Scape Shift's decks. Now, he doesn't have those. He has Lightning Bolts. Um, I guess, actually, there's a lot less removal. There's less Electrolyze style effects in the Scape Shift deck. Yeah. So cards like Aven Mind Sensor, Lane and Arbiter, Thalia, figure to be problematic. Eldrazi Taxes is relatively good against Reman, though, being an Aether Vial deck. So it does have that. Yeah, it is good against up. Remand and Cryptic. Right. Davis has three copies of Aether Vial. I don't know if I've ever seen that in my life. I, it's been four or zero. That's interesting. The decks that want it usually re very much want it. Yeah, I'd check out the deck tech, see what he has to say about that. That's, that's interesting. I'll have to pick Jim's brain at a later time. So we have the Star City Games weekly sale coming out right now on the website. This is, we have these going on every week, so... They end Monday at 11, well, 10.59 a.m. That's Eastern time. Uh, right now, the current sale you can get, so this is through this weekend, we have selected full art basic lands. So you see there, whether they're old Zendikar, new Zendikar, unglued, unhinged, all those available right now on the website for sale. Yeah, big fan of unhinged lands myself. Uh, I have some respect for unglued. I, I've never personally played with them. I like actually the full art Zendikars, if I'm going to do those. They're what I have in my cube, and uh, I'll be, being entirely honest, it was a budget concession. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's what I could afford for my cube. But uh, yeah, maybe you've been looking at unhinged lands. Go pick some up on the sale. For Jim Davis, the captain of metagamegurus.com, he's the current player's champion, defeating Todd Anderson last December in Roanoke. From Long Island, New York, he has two open wins and 10 open series top eights, along with two invitational top eights. It's his best year yet on the tour as he won the player's championship. In addition to that, he's a local radio DJ and has a weekly show that he hosts and is quite the hockey enthusiast. Uh, New York Rangers fan, I believe. <laughs> I believe. It's in No, no, not in I believe. New York Rangers fan. In literally every article he's ever written. Sometimes he wears their jerseys. Though now he's got his own jersey, so no need for that. Tough playoffs year for New York, though. I believe you. Also for Minnesota, sadly. I continue, That's my team. I continue to trust you as an authority on the, on the uh, subject. You're from Minneapolis, but don't know, you don't follow hockey? No, sir. Oh, goodness. Come on now. Jim, turn one Aether Vial on the playoff Godless Shrine. So we're underway for game three here. You see actually two copies of Shambling Vent in Jim's hand. Yes, we are playing modern, not standard. Turns out that creature lands are just excellent. Um, I, I like the inclusion. How about this, though? Two Tide Hollow Scullers in Jim's hand. That's, that figures to be real good against Scape Shift. Yeah, that's, that's another card that uh, doesn't see a ton of play in Modern, but it's easily on the power level for the format. I like that card quite a lot. 
He'll play Tide Hollow Scholar. Jessup has a Lightning Bolt in hand. We'll actually fan out the hand here. So remand two copies of Lightning Bolt. That's excellent. Yeah. So when you compare Tide Hollow Scholar to Thought Not Seer, there's concern. There's, there's just an idea you can cast, say, a terminate or removal spell in response to the Thought Not Seer. If you kill the Tide Hollow Scholar with the discard trigger on the stack, yeah, don't do that. Then the Scholar is just going to take a card from your hand. It will already have left the battlefield. That ability to put the card back in your hand will have triggered. You're never going to get that card back. Do not make that mistake. He'll go ahead and take one of the lightning bolts. Andrew fetches. So he fetches for Steam Vents untapped, floats a red mana, uses it to kill the Sculler, and gets back his Lightning Bolt. Yep. Plays Flooded Grove and Pass. Now Vile ticks up to two. We go back to Jim Davis. He's kept in, this is an interesting one, Wasteland Strangler appears to still be in the deck. It's interesting. I like it with Tide Hollow Sculler. I'm a little surprised to see it in the matchup post board against Scape Shift. Yeah, there shouldn't be too much on Jessup's side of the table to actually kill. Seems to be a concession that Jim just has to have a clock in this matchup. Yeah, he needs a 3 2 for 3. Right. It's not pretty, but sometimes that's how it works. It's very far from pretty. Davis's hand appears to be two more, two shambling vents, a Ghost Quarter, a Wasteland Strangler, and a Tide Hollow Sculler. He'll play Vent and pass the turn. Back to Jessup, draws Island. He'll cast Explore, stomping ground into play untapped. And Island. And just continues to ramp as the Scape Shift deck is wont to do. Yeah, and so that Wasteland Stranger, not very good for Davis, but uh, we're seeing as this game progressive, Jessup just getting one land closer to that Scape Shift turn where he can just kill Davis. Jessup was leaving up Remand mana. That's not going to help against Tide Hollow Scholar. So Jim will play that. We see his hand now. Sakura Tribe Elder, two Remands, a Lightning Bolt, and a Cryptic Command. Yeah, with two Remands there, we're not going to be able to take them both. It looks like Jim wants to protect his creature, so he'll take the other copy of Lightning Bolt. Yeah, you take the Lightning Bolt because any other card you take, the Lightning Bolt just gets it right back by tagging the Tide Hollow Sculler. Well, what's neat is Jim can process the Lightning Bolt with Wasteland Strangler, I believe. If you process it, I believe you have to actually oh, okay. give a creature minus three, minus hmm. three. Less excited about it now. Right. So you're basically casting the Lightning Bolt for Jessup. Tide Hollow Sculler will attack Andrew down to 13. Jim's going to follow up with a copy of Thalia. I don't see any reason why this wouldn't prompt a remand. Yeah, it's going to get the remand. And Jim will play it again. And showing some good signs there. The draw for Man for Jessup was a copy of Serum Visions. But this is a huge draw for Jessup. He draws another copy of Lightning Bolt, and that... That should be able to clean up everything here. Yeah, the first Lightning Bolt's going to cost two because it has to target the Sculler, and then the second will also cost two because the Thalia will still be in play. But Jessup does just have an answer to Jim's board. So on this turn, he won't be able to Bolt, Bolt, and leave up Remand. So there's some decisions on Jessup's side. I think there's no way we don't at least get the Sculler off the table. There are four Flicker Wisp in Davis's deck, and Jessup oh, knows this. These guys okay. are on the same team. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's got to be concerned about that. The Vial's on three, so that's a real concern. You can't reman something coming in off an Aether Vial. I think if this got Flicker Wisped, then Andrew would lose. You know, he'll, he'll make the play. He'll go for it anyway. So Jimmy out the Flicker Wisp to get him. Jim's hand, I believe, is Wasteland Strangler and Shambling Vent. So now Jim could vial in 
the Wasteland Strangler and just process the bolt to kill the Sculler. So that stops Jessup from getting the other Lightning Bolt back. Okay, so Wasteland Strangler, yeah. You may put a card in opponent's egg owns from exile into player's graveyard. If you do, target creature gets minus three. So he'll put that lightning bolt into Anders' graveyard. He has to give a creature minus three, minus three, so I think he is going to kill his own Sculler. But you're right. Now, when that Sculler dies, Jim Jessup does not get the bolt back. Yeah, the Strangler is not good in this matchup outside of being a creature. He wants to put it into play anyway. The creature is already being targeted by a removal spell. He just stops Jessup from getting the lightning bolt. Really heads up move by Davis there. Yeah, Jessup still does have a Serum Visions which he can cast with the remaining mana, so not everything is lost. Now, a mistap here for Jessup, though. He uh, can't play the Tribe Builder post combat. He's going to have to go for Serum Visions. Yeah, try to tap Steam Vance Island for a green creature. That's not going to work yeah, out. Yeah, caught himself. The Scry for two, he'll leave a Valakut on top and put another Serum Visions on the bottom, and he'll pass. Five power on Davis' side of the board. In particularly, just leaving Island on tapped after casting a spell when you have all other non-basics, just generally not great mana tapping. Lane and Arbiter is the play for Davis. He will use Ghost Quarter to get rid of the Flooded Grove. Now, this is the, that potent co interaction between the two cards. It, it just works as a, a strip mine style effect. Andrew just can't find a basic. Yeah, Wasteland is not even legal in Modern. If your opponent is tapped out, this is a build your own strip mine. And, and the card Land and Arbiter, I said it before in, when we were watching game two, it is one of the best cards against Escape Shift. You see Sakura Tribal to play for Andrew. He, he can't even sacrifice that. Yeah, if Jim still had the Wasteland Strangler, this would actually be a window for him to profitably strangle the Sakura Tribe Elder. And instead, he'll activate Shambling Vent, swing the entire team. Sakura Tribe has to chump block the Strangler. Jessup will go down to two. And too much disruption is going to take care of and with, this Eldrazi deck. With Jessup at two, he can't even do something like Cryptic Command to tap Davis's team because Davis has two Shambling Vents. One of them will get activated and rumble in for lethal. He draws a copy of Misty Rainforest. You can't even crack that to find a land without paying two. Back to Davis. He'll go to attacks. And Andrew can't pay. He can't pay for the Cryptic Command. He doesn't actually have five lands. Can't pay for the Cryptic Command. Wouldn't even be good enough if he cast it. Uh, Eldrazi Texas. It, this could be a real modern deck. Yeah, a 2-1 win here for Jim Davis. A matchup which, this is a tough one for Scapeshift. Yeah, you're pretty excited when you have Leon and Arbiter in your deck to have an opponent that's going to try to shuffle their deck a whole bunch of times. So this seems like the kind of matchup that Jim is gun gunning for here. Uh, we did see the awkwardness with the Wasteland Strangler. Sure, that's fine. There are really powerful spells in the matchup, though. Thalia also no slouch.